once you know what you need, do and be your best, you need to communicate that to the people around you so that they can give you what it is you need. Set those expectations for them. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. It's Andrea Patrick, the BU Boss. I've got two amazing guests on the channel today. They're going to talk to us a little bit about the idea of work-life harmony. You've heard me talk about this multiple times here on the channel, but I want you to hear it from some pros who are helping other women in their spaces to live a harmonious life with their planning. So I've got a couple of questions for them and they're going to hook us up with some great answers. So if that sounds like something that you want to know more about, then keep watching. Hello. Okay, guys, let me introduce you. This is Allegra and Natasha, and they are part of an organization. Their business is called How to Live or Live Beyond Your Wildest Dreams. All of their information is going to be down in the description because I know once you hear what they have to say when they answer these questions that you're going to be asking me how to get up with them. But girl, I got you. I'm hooking you up. They already, <laughs> I've got it. I've got all the tea and they've got a freebie too that I'm going to put down below. So make sure that you grab that as well. But thank you, ladies. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the channel. Thank Hi, you. thanks for having us. All right. Now, I want to get into this whole work-life harmony thing because I truly do not believe in work-life balance. I don't think it's fair to ask anybody to like balance their life between work and family. So I really speak more to the point of work-life balance harmony. And so in that, I coach my clients on um, really getting into what they need to do and be their best so that they can give out of overflow. We've talked about that here before. And we also talked about it over on the podcast. So guys, they were on my podcast as well. I'll put that down below also. But we talk about that giving out of overflow because as you know, as women, we are conditioned to give out of a deficit. Like we give to everybody else instead of like filling our cup and giving from what's left over. So what I want to know from you is what does harmony look like in your life? And if you could just give us some tips on how people can prioritize themselves without feeling guilty and not prioritizing some of those traditional things that people think we should prioritize, like our husbands and our kids and like the this and the that. How can we, how can we overcome that? Just give us some tea, girl. Well, I feel like that was a few <laughs> questions. I know, girl. It's a lot. It's a lot. You just got to go with the flow. You just tell me. I'll, I'll start. I'll slow over. Okay. I'll so, so no, I, we totally agree with you. We, we don't like the word work-life balance because, mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, there are different seasons of life. And in different seasons of life, different things are going to be important. Maybe maybe you don't even have a family that is something that's on your radar per se. And so when we are coaching our students on how to plan their year, we like to talk about it as your recipe. What is your ideal Ooh. recipe for the year? Because we can all think of you know, the ideal recipe for whatever, soup, salad, whatever you like to make, you know, it's like, I like to have a lot of greens and then a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And so I, my recipe for my year is at least six to tw six to 12 date nights, you know, four to six mommy daughter days, six camping trips. So that you can see how I'm building my that. ideal year. And then I can literally go and put those things into my calendar. You know, I, I want to attend one work conference. I want, we want to release two books a year. So then you can go and you can build in the activities that need to happen. So that's, that's how I like to think of it. And always evaluating against the lens of what are your values and are you living your values? Once you're really clear about your values, I feel like, coming up with your recipe for the year is much easier. And the recipe is like a really tangible way of incorporating the things that you value, right? Because it's like, oh, it'd be so great if, if as a family we did more hikes, let's say, right? Oh, that'd be so great. Cool. Awesome. How's that going to happen, right? You want to make sure that you put it into your your space and then your calendar. So maybe, you know, maybe your family did zero hikes last year. Maybe you want to do once a month, right? So you're like, 
okay, that's 12, right? You can wrap your brain around that number and then put it into your your schedule, your calendar. And this way it exists. We talked about this in the podcast too. It exists in out of your head and space and then putting it in time too. So, th- so it's not so much about like, now I need to have a balanced work life since I've just balanced my family life. It's it that's a crazy fallacy to think that you can get those scales to, to so line up, right? Um, and like Allegra said, there's we have different seasons of life, different seasons of time, different like literal seasons in the year, right? And so that's just it's not realistic to try to get those scales exactly right. I love this idea of harmony, right? So you've got mm-hmm. two things. Got a melody and a harmony of being a singer. We love, we love and musicians love this idea of harmony. Two things that like really complement coexist. Other. Yeah, for multiple things, multiple part harmonies that coexist but are not exactly the same, right? And so they and they complement each other. We have a thing in our that we do with our clients and our alumni, which we do a, a course correct, which we really just basically it's a monthly review, but we like to call it, call it course correct because this idea of like you're on a path, you're on a course, and maybe you need to do, 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 adjust it and correct it to continue to get where you're going because maybe you kind of veered off, right? Um, and inside of that course correct, we love to have this thing called we have an instrument panel, right? So we have like these, you do some assessments, you talk about your accomplishments, you talk about more, this is more maybe just like, heady things but this is more of like a visual right and we have this we have this thing we call the assessment wheel and it just and it's like you color in like how how would i rate myself on human connection this month and you know one two four five it's up to ten and so when you color in this wheel you know you can see the areas where it's like oh wow my finances were a little i was not really paying attention to them but it's not the goal isn't to get a fully full wheel like a perfectly full wheel right this is just not a realistic and b just way too out of reach you know you're as just far- taking a temperature yeah you're just taking a temperature and you can be like oh wow for a couple months now my finances have been at a five you know like and because you you take a look at last month maybe too and that kind of thing and you can kind of see like all right well maybe that's a place where i need to up my game right but it's really okay if you know your contribution wheel is not was at a 10 last month right like maybe you volunteered a bunch last month and it's not at that this month it's really okay. Like it's really more about just kind of like assessment as opposed to, you know, a way of berating yourself or trying to like just grab this like, you know, this this fallacy of balance that yeah, needs it's to just happen. making you aware. And I feel like that's the first step to prioritizing yourself is self-reflection, you know, asking so yourself good. these questions mm-hmm. and really thinking about, oh, what makes me happy? How do I want to spend my time? You know, there's this saying out there that people spend more time planning a vacation than planning for their life. And we get it. A vacation is short and confined. You know you need a car or a plane to get there. You know that you need someplace to stay. And life is just all these opportunities. <laughs> yes. But if you don't spend some time thinking about how you want to spend this life, then how do you expect to get there? Right? Like you don't just go to an Italian restaurant. First you think, I want to have Italian food. And then you look, what's open? Right? There are these steps that you take. Same thing with life. Like I want to XYZ. And if you haven't answered that question for yourself, then you're not wasting any time because you haven't decided how to spend your time. So your first step is you need to take some time reflecting on what it is that you want, how you want to spend your time. And then if you live with other people, so if you have a, a partner or a spouse or children, you also need to be honest with them that you need time for yourself. My mother's generation, it's crazy to me how many times my mom would say, well, your father should just know. And I was like, how should he know? Is he a mind reader? I used to say that about my Christmas presents. My husband should just know. I've been giving you hints all year. Yes. And it's funny because the present that my mom will still to this day, most hopefully she doesn't listen to this podcast. (laughs) Uh, And she still to this day was like, if your dad could just give presents like that one time when he gave me this one present and it was something I picked out. I said to him, I was like, hey, I think mom would like this. (laughs) You should get it for her. But did he ever ask for my help again after that, even after she would gush about how great this one thing? And I didn't want to ruin it for her, so I wasn't like, well, it's because he didn't pick it out, you know? But, (laughs) you know, why should they know? And again, I hope my mom doesn't hear this podcast, but my mom is not great at remembering birthdays. And there were a few years in a row where it really hurt my feelings. But again, that Cosmic 2 boy 4 I was like, well, look, I can be happy this year on my birthday, or I can once again 
be like, why does she not remember my birthday? And I was like, hey, mom, we're having my, we're going to celebrate my birthday on this day. Hope you can make it. And she gave me the most stunning flower arrangement for that birthday. And I, and I was like, I took a moment and I was like, do I feel, is this any less joyful a gift? Because I had to remind her about my birthday and I realized right. it was not. I told her because I needed to tell her for myself. And I experienced the pleasure of doing that. You have to understand what you need to do and be your best all together anyway. And we talk about that all the time here on how you can be real, how you can be authentic and transparent. That's awesome. Listen, you guys have given us some great tips and I want to run through them because the way we talked about it, I know I ran through the questions rather quickly, but you guys handled it amazingly well. And I'm so appreciative. I want to kind of recap and just kind of tell you what I got from what you said. And then if there's anything you want to fill in between, let me know. But I, I really do love what you guys had to say. First, you talked about self-reflection. That should be the number one thing. And I think that you're absolutely right. Understanding what you need to do and be your best, how you can show up as your best self and knowing what it is you need is important. And then also, I think you didn't even specify this as, as a step, but I think it should be one. And that is communicating that once you know what you need, do and be your best, you need to communicate that to the people around you so that they can give you what it is you need, set those expectations for them. And then also you talked about, I love this, creating a recipe. That was phenomenal. Go back and listen, guys. I'm not gonna recap that. You gotta rewind. And then also you talked about, Natasha talked about the evaluation process and assessing what you've done to make sure that you're staying on tar target to actually achieve the thing, to have that harmony in the first place. So guys, that is phenomenal advice that we can all take right now and use and apply to our lives so that we can actually have that work-life harmony and stop trying to balance out something because we're trying to, I don't know, do it somebody else's way. You know, I don't know. We can't do that this year. This year has to be a better year. And I think you are helping us to live beyond our wildest dreams. And I want to say thank you for being on my show. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. All right, guys, listen, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you are not already. And then leave us a comment. How are you finding harmony in your life? Tell us. We want to know. If you want to know more about what Natasha and Allegra are doing in their business over at Live Beyond Your Wildest Dreams, then make sure that you click on the link below. They've got a freebie for you and you can read all about how they're helping people to get their lives to get the honey. Great conversation. Make sure you listen to that podcast as well. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.